Good morning, or afternoon, or evening, or night, depending on when you are watching this. Today I will tell you a bit about what is somewhat mysteriously called energetic programming. What do I mean with that? Here you see a 3D image of the heat demand and heat potential of a city, in this case Rotterdam in the Netherlands. In blue you see the current demand, in yellow the solar potential, in red the geothermal potential. Then there are orange veins, which are, is the potential from roads, and lots of dispersed dots of waste heat. This graphical representation was made possible through research, step zero of our new step strategy. Likewise, we can apply this strategy to this urban scale. Also on the city scale, the demand for energy needs to be reduced. At the moment, here in Rotterdam, the demand is twice as high as the natural potential for heat. The possibility for the reuse step is much more interesting within the city than on the building scale. Sources of waste heat production should be better used. And finally, within the city there are more options to produce energy than just by putting PV on buildings. This lecture will go deeper into the interesting second step of the new step strategy, reuse, and look at the pro programmatical attuning, exchanging, cascading and storing of energy, heat in particular. This starts with the notion that the city accommodates many different urban functions, which all have different energy patterns. Here we see eight different functions and their energy patterns for heat, W, cold, K and electricity, E. As you may see, the energy demands per square meter differ a lot. Some buildings use a lot of heat, others more cold. What we teach you in this course is basically how to make a single building energy neutral, but in an urban context it might be smarter to attune the different functions, make use of excesses and shortages, and to exchange heat between buildings. Like this. It might seem a very technical assignment to exchange heat and cold, but this can also be done on the scale of one building that combines different functions. Based on the spatial use of energy for heating and cooling, a certain quantity of square meters of one function might be combined with a certain amount of floor space of another in order to create synergy. It's a principle of nature. Here you see some of these possible combinations, which would then only need to have a combined energy system. A concrete example of this was elaborated by my master's student Nick ten Kaat who designed a joint energy system for a supermarket positioned in an urban block of apartments in Amsterdam. Nick designed the energy system, added solar panels and greenhouses onto the roof and calculated the performance. By using the heat coming from the supermarket's cooling, the apartments could be largely heated through the year. He managed a carbon emission reduction by more than 60%. Cascading is a different way of becoming more efficient with the same amount of energy. I will illustrate this by means of this scheme, starting with the renewable geothermal source of 70 degrees Celsius. It works like this. This relatively high temperature can be fed into an old residential area where buildings have radiators now powered by gas boilers. After having exchanged its heat, the water of the district heating system has become colder, say 50 degrees, which then is suited for newer houses, which have a low temperature heating system, for instance underfloor heating. The water, water remaining after this neighborhood has further decreased in temperature, say 35 degrees. This is still sufficient to be used for extremely well insulated buildings and for horticulture, as in this scheme. This functional uses of water of an ever lower temperature for different functions is called heat cascading. You use one quantity of energy for three different functions, instead of three times as much. Over time, different types of exchanging, cascading, storing and heat have been studied. This is an overview of technical ideas for a city harbour in Rotterdam, where an optimal system for heat and cold could be elaborated in various ways. I won't go into them, it's just to show that we can become much smarter with energy on the urban scale. One example, almost a no-brainer, is the collection of heat within the city, when this heat is undesired and using it when heat is in shortage. By making urban services function as solar collectors, we can cool the city in summer and use that heat for winter time, either to avoid freezing services or to heat homes or other buildings. Therefore, the city's largest services would have to be equipped with tubes, 
through which water or other liquids would run and which would then function as a heat exchanger. Interseasonal storage of heat would have to be ensured if heat cannot be used immediately. So again, I hope you see that our cities can become much more intelligent energy-wise. They could function better as organisms, learning from examples in nature. But that will be a topic for a different course though. For now, thanks for your attention and good luck with this week's assignment. See you again next week.